conveniently situated on the Bay of Fundy in the province of New Brunswick lies the quaint old city of St. John, one of the eastern gateways to Canada. Its history dramatically associates itself with the American Revolution, for it was here that many English loyalists settled after having been exiled from their homes in the newly created United States of America. Just a few years before George Washington was inaugurated as president, about 3,000 of these exiles landed here and founded the town of St. John, while thousands of others settled in the valley of the St. John River, so that it may be concluded that a large number of the inhabitants of New Brunswick today are descended from the English loyalists who came from that land that is now known as the United States of America. <laughs> Spacious parks and commons in the heart of the city, along with invigorating sea breezes, contribute largely to St. John's reputation as one of the healthiest cities in Canada. In almost every city or town in North America, there is a schoolhouse which claims among its pupils at least one who distinguished himself through achievements of worldwide significance. And this institution is no exception, for it boasts of the fact that it was here that Louis B. Mayer went to school. The same Louis B. Mayer who walked down these steps and out into the world as a youngster in modest circumstances and ultimately became, as he is today, a guiding spirit of the motion picture industry, as well as the mayor part of the world-famous Metro-Golden-Mayer Company. The Bay of Fundy at the mouth of the St. John River has been heralded in song and story as a haven for those who go down to the sea in ships. It is also noted for a natural phenomenon which has become one of the main attractions of New Brunswick. At the point where the tide meets the river, a condition is created which is known as the reversing falls. In other words, when the tide is coming in from the Bay of Fundy, it forces the flow of the river backward, and the condition is naturally reversed when the tide flows out. And now let us cruise up the picturesque river where one may see an occasional tug towing its load of lumber to the mills or a fisherman who uses an aquaplane to transport him to the scene of his pleasure. The St. John River abounds in fish of various species, but salmon is the choice catch. And here is a somewhat modest sample according to the anglers of New Brunswick. Nowhere in our extensive traveling have we seen a more interesting bridge than the one which gracefully spans the St. John River near Fredericton. It is called the Snow Bridge and is said to be the largest of its kind in the world. About 85 miles up the St. John River is the capital of the city of Fredericton, seat of government for the province of New Brunswick, also founded by the English loyalists at the close of the American Revolution. Christ Church Cathedral is said to be the first cathedral foundation on English soil since the Norman Conquest. Fredericton itself is a quaint, quiet, and peaceful little town, fittingly designed for the purpose it serves. The popular resort of Bathurst is noted for its ideal bathing conditions, but unfortunately at the time of our visit, the summer season was over and autumn skies were already casting their ominous shadows over Bathurst Lodge, giving the characteristic touch of sadness to the closing days of a popular summer resort. The Union Jack, which is in conspicuous evidence throughout the province, reminds us of the intense loyalty which New Brunswick still holds for its mother country. And a typical panorama of the countryside also reminds us that nature helps to keep this sentiment alive with rolling hills and landscapes resembling rural England itself. Farming is one of the country's major industries, and in harvest time, nothing is more colorful than the vast fields of golden wheat scattered in picturesque profusion along the banks of New Brunswick's many rivers. In colorful contrast to the wheat fields are the potato farms, upon which thousands of bushels of choice potatoes are grown annually. The lumber industry is foremost among the industries of New Brunswick. 
And in the flood season, nothing is more spectacular than the sight of the swift flowing rivers jammed full of rolling logs en route to the numerous lumber mills where they are stored in ponds or sluices until utilized. In a placid cove on the Bay of Fundy lies the little town of Black's Harbor, headquarters of the Canadian sardine industry, as well as the largest sardine factory in the world. Practically the whole population of Black's Harbor is engaged in the sardine business the women preparing the fish in the factory for shipment to the markets of the world, while the men catch them in large weirs, almost within sight of the factory. Sardines are vegetarians, and they naturally migrate into coves like Black's Harbor, where choice vegetation floats on the surface of the water. Then, too, the tides here rise as high as 30 feet, bringing with them millions of sardines, which are caught in the weirs as the tides recede. Then the fishermen go to work, literally shoveling the swimming silver into their boats. We are told there is no such fish as a sardine the word itself being coined from Sardinia. And what is generally referred to as a sardine is in reality a small species of herring. All in the passing of a working day, these sardines are caught, salted, cleaned, cooked, packed, and shipped to all parts of the world. Verily, Mother Nature has been kind to New Brunswick, for in addition to an abundant measure of wheat, potatoes, lumber, and fish, she has also endowed this province with picturesque landscapes and a delightful climate, all of which tempts us to linger a while. But the approach of our seaplane reminds us that it is time for us to depart. So with a final view of Lake Utopia, we conclude our glimpses of New Brunswick and fly away to other ports of call.